Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. As always, subscribe, share, and support. You may subscribe wherever you are listening to, hopefully with ears that hear these words of God that I read aloud and recite for you. You may share the very words of God that you hear read aloud or, or the link to where you found this. And you may support by subscribing to the Substack, aksum.substack.com, or heading over to join the YouTube channel, or going to patreon.com slash tawahado, T-E-W-A-H-I-D-O. We are in the 20th chapter of the scroll of Revelation, the scroll of Apocalypse, the scroll of Uncovering. We only have 21 and 22 after this, so I hope you've been enjoying it thus far, and I hope I've been able to provide at least some bit of insight while still letting the text speak on its own behalf. Let me begin with verses 1 to 6, and as always, for the sake of the public domain, we are reading from the King James Version. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Without delving too much into this thousand years, let me just remind you that these multiples of ten, ten, hundred, thousand, thousands, ten thousand, ten thousands, these are all to say a huge number. Remember that before all the lakes of Minnesota were counted, it was known as the land of 10,000 lakes. After they were actually counted with modern science and mathematics and calculation, they found out there were actually more than 10,000 lakes. I think the number is somewhere like 11,000 something or 12,000. It doesn't matter. It's just a big number. In any event, the dragon, the devil, the Satan, the slanderer, the accuser, is under control. It doesn't matter. Don't be afraid that he's going to be let out for a little season. He's under control. And he's under control of the messenger who's given a key to that bottomless pit, to that seal. And this messenger is under the control of God. This is just like the scroll of Job, where there is a hashatan, where there is an accuser, an adversary, an enemy. And yet, no matter what he does, he's under the control of God. Fret not, no worries. And we see this tiered resurrection, at least two tiers, first and second. And there is a Christianity that is without struggle, that is with more comfort. And probably if we're listening to this podcast, we are probably in that category. And then there's a Christianity where you live it out and you get beheaded. And of the two, the beheaded ones are called blessed and holy. Let that simmer on your mind. And hopefully, it doesn't mean you have to go seek out being beheaded. Don't be foolhardy. But if the beheading comes, you accept it as a blessing. And you, you accept it as a sanctifying process, a process that makes you holier. Verses 7 to 10. And when the thousand years are expired, 
Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. As I'm recording this 20th chapter of the Scroll of Apocalypse, my dear brother Deacon Mahadi, a fellow laborer in the Lord, gave a presentation on the Persian sage, Afrahat. And one of the emphasis, one of the many emphases of his demonstrations, particularly in the seventh demonstration, is this idea of the Christian is in battle. And you have to check how many arms are in your armory. And if you get wounded, you need to be healed, but not so that you can be comfortable, so you can go back into battle. Of course, not a physical battle. Of course, not a physical insurrection. Otherwise, that's not Christianity. That's the religion of the zealots. But here, to understand Gog and Magog, we have to understand that Revelation chapter 20 is an invitation to go read for the first time or to reread the scroll of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39, in which we learn who Gog and Magog are and how they have enmity with God and how God or Yahweh, the Lord, will show his might, not because of the greatness of Israel, but so that his own name is no longer profaned, made mundane, made common, but rather that it is hallowed, that it is made holy and taboo and different and unique and distinct. So they have many numbers, but remember, the numbers are functional. The enemies have numbers equivalent to the sand of the sea. That's a lot of enemies. You know who else has as many numbers as the sand of the sea and the stars of the sky? Those who trust in the covenant. Those who are children of Abraham, according to the spirit, according to faith, according to placing their superlative and utmost trust in the Lord, in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if you're on that team, then you're not going to be like Gog and Magog, who get the lake of fire and get the torment day and night forever and ever. Instead, you'll get the parallel, the foil to torment day and night, is the blessed man of Psalm 1 who gets to hear the instruction of life day and night forever because remember, the Psalms are the form of worship in Mount Zion above, in the heavenly Jerusalem, the temple of the cosmos, the temple of the universe, the true temple of God, which is not built by human hands or human laid bricks. Verses 11 to 15, that is to say 11 to the end. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell, should be uh, Hades here, or Sheol, or the place of the dead, delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell or Hades, Sheol, the place of the dead, 
were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. What is the role or the job of Jesus that across the board, Christians, but particularly American Christians, loathe so much? It is Jesus as the enthroned judge whose metrics is God forbid, heaven forbid, say it ain't so, works. Is this works-based salvation? Deeds, works. Do with that whatever you want, but this is the living word of God. May our Lord save us from the lake of fire, which is prepared for the dragon, the devil, Satan, Gog, Magog, and all of their messengers. May he write our names in the book of life. And glory be to him forever and ever.